What does the name Volkswagen mean to you? Well, if you work in the Audi Volkswagen network, it obviously means a great deal of your living. But leaving that aside for a moment, what images does the, the word, the, the mark itself, conjure up for you? Does it perhaps suggest the post-war years, Spartan but full of optimism, or maybe the youthful but self-conscious prosperity of the 60s? Certainly, your image will contain the Beatle, but uh, how far beyond that archetype does it go? Your perceptions probably shot through with good old Germanic characteristics like solid engineering, safety, reliability, that deliberate sparseness and lack of frills. Whatever your feelings, you can't help but be familiar with that overwhelming sense of heritage of a, a glorious history stretching back over successes and achievements, all based on that wonderful little car that won the hearts and minds of millions. Well, here at Wolfsburg, they've opened a museum dedicated to Volkswagen. And one of the first things you find on entering the museum is the original prototype of the Beetle, Dr. Ferdinand Porsche's 1934 design exercise. All the Beetle concepts were there, the flat four engine in the back, air cooled, driving the rear wheels, the solid construction and the unmistakable lines were starting to emerge. By 1938, Dr. Porsche had clarified those lines even more and the car was almost ready to go into production in 1941. Now this 1938 prototype was Dr. Porsche's very own personal transport. He drove it all over Germany in those early years. After the war, it was broken up and the bits were dispersed all over Berlin. Volkswagen found those bits in the 50s, put them all back together again, and here it is in the museum, to the great delight of Beatle fans worldwide. And what a lot of Beatle fans there were. By 1955, they sold a million Beatles. And by 1981, they'd sold 20 million Beatles. This is actually the 20 millionth example. It comes from Mexico, where they still build the Beatle today. In fact, in October of this year, they celebrate 50 continuous years of Beatle production, and that's a world record. Today, the Volkswagen name means an awful lot more than just the Beetle. Of course, the modern current range has inherited many of the Beatles' virtues, but the, the concept of Volkswagen that lives on in the minds of people who design, who build, who sell, and who own Volkswagen are, are much more complex than that. It, it all adds up to, to quality. It's not just the engineering quality, which is the, the rock upon which Volkswagen has been built. There's an awful lot of other things like sophistication, sense of purpose, style, things that appeal to the emotions. I know that the people who market Volkswagens are always keen that the customer is given the fullest possible picture of that complex personality. The only way to do that is to sell Volkswagen with just a little emotion. Chris Goffey reporting from Wolfsburg. Welcome to Innovations 86, a Volkswagen marketing program in which we're going to tell you all about the changes to the Volkswagen model range for 1986. We'll be going back to Wolfsburg during the program to join the product team with some of the latest cars. We'll be visiting one of the largest and most modern car production plants in the world. We'll be taking a look at the Volkswagen Design Studio for a preview of three stylish new additions to the range. And Chris Goffey will be putting the sensational 16-valve Golf GTI through its paces. During the programme, I'll be talking to Ellen Clark, the newly appointed Volkswagen brand manager, who I'm sure is well known to all of you. Ellen, hello. What exactly does the Volkswagen title mean to you? Well, Volkswagen is a name that I grew up with, uh, right back to the Beetle days, though not quite 50 years, I hasten to add. It means all the essential Volkswagen qualities of reliability, safety, durability and good engineering. As you say, reliability, of course, very important, but is that um, all there is to it? Oh, absolutely not. Um, Volkswagen are extremely innovative and, and 
the GTI was the first of the hot hatchbacks and arguably still the best of the hot hatchbacks. We have the very sporty and stylish Sirocco and of course at the bottom of the range we have the little Polo Coupe which is essentially stylish and adds that image to the bottom of the range and also we have the, the quality, uh, the essential quality, not engineering quality alone but the quality of the product which makes people very proud to drive it. So what about 1986? 1986 is going to be a difficult year, but we have very much taken into account the demands from our dealer network to rationalise our range. We have rationalised our range in line with what we feel our market forces, and we have also upspecced part of our range, so we have what we believe is a very competitive range for 1986. Ellen, for the moment, thanks very much indeed. Now, let's go back to Chris Goffey, who's at the heart of the Volkswagen complex with one of the 1986 models. Models. Wolfsburg, the original Windy City. Now this is a brand new Passat estate just off the production line here at the factory. In Germany, the Passat shares number one spot with the German equivalent of the Vauxhall Cavalier, but in Britain, the Passat isn't quite in the same position. Now with me is uh, Passat product manager Nigel Walker. Nigel, what are you going to do about that situation? Uh, in fact, Chris, obviously earlier in the year we did suffer from an awareness problem on Passat, particularly when we had the Sentana name still with us. Uh, and as a result, we made the decision early in the year to, for the first time ever, put the Passat on television, uh, and which we did, and the television advert ran in June early part of July, and that was followed by um, a still from the TV commercial, which we used as our national media advert, and we ran that through all, all the papers during July, on the run-up to the 1st of August, and continued that through to the, the first week in August. Assuming customers become more aware of the Passat, mightn't the, the baffling array of options and models and variations just uh, stampede them into buying a Sierra? Well, we certainly hope not, Chris. Uh, yes, I think one of the problems on the 1985 uh, Passat range was we did have too many models. In fact, we had 22 variations of Passat. So what we did do, uh, and I think the decision was, uh, with bearing in mind what our dealers told us, that we reduced that model range down to 16 and effectively deleted the cars which we don't sell. The Passat C Saloon, which only sold a handful throughout its uh, life, obviously was, was the first to go. Uh, we rationalised the turbo diesel offer for 1986 by in fact only offering now two models, which are based on the C. Um, again, the, the CL package, which costs between 650 and 850 pounds, just was very, very difficult to justify and consumerise. So, as I say, we go with the, with the C turbo diesel. And I'm sure many dealers, in fact, will order that with the optional interior, which is the sports seats and Glencheck upholstery. And the final model we deleted, of course, was a four-speed gearbox option on Passats. So, in fact, now all Passats imported into the UK will have the, the 4 plus E five-speed gearbox as standard. I know you've recently restyled the Passat. Does that mean there's no change for 1986? Well, yes, of course, you're quite right. In fact, in, at the end of March this year, we introduced the facelifted Passat range, so the actual off offer from the factory is very minimal. Um, what we have done is increase some equipment levels. For instance, we're putting rear head restraints as standard on all GL5 models this year. Um, all Passats will have these side indicator repeaters, which in the UK will be a mandatory market requirement uh, again for 1986. We are refitting the uh, radio fader control. And finally, we we've rationalised the colour choice from um, uh, an enormous array last year down to the colours basically we sold. We've increased the option on metallics uh, down to the C-series and for the first time we've made uh, non-metallic paints available on GL5. What about service? Well, like all Volkswagens for 1986, Chris, the Passat range will feature the 20,000 mile extended service intervals together with a one-year inspection check. And um, the whole range, of course, now uh, will have the free vehicle recovery service, which I think really puts the Passat range now in a far stronger position than we've ever seen. A major part of Volkswagen's £500 million investment plan for the new Golf was the conception of this place, Hall 54. It's one of the largest and most modern car production plants in the world. Assembly here is totally mechanised with the most comprehensive use of robots ever. So concerned were they about quality that the robots even checked their own work. 
And not satisfied with that, they employ over 900 human quality control inspectors just to make sure. It all adds up to better conditions and more interesting jobs for the people who work here. And the customer benefits too, from higher production quality than ever before. Now with me is Lucy Cooper, who's product manager for Golf, Jetta and Sirocco. Lucy, this is the, the latest car from that huge factory over there, but it's not available in Britain yet. No, it's a new model for 86. It's the 1600 CL. It offers the benefits of better performance um, with a cheaper trim package than is currently available in the UK. So now, who, who will you uh, aim this at? Who's going to buy it? Well, we hope that we'll get some conquest business from people that are currently buying 1600 Astra L's and Escort L's. And what about the rest of the Golf range? Any changes there? Yes, we've deleted some models and introduced others that we feel will give us a, a more successful lineup like in the what? UK. Well, we've um, got the GL with the 1800 carburetor engine. It's a well-liked engine and it, it obviously gives you better performance, but good economy. And what have you taken out? Well, we've deleted the, the standard model, which was the cheapest uh, model in the lineup, and the Formula E. The Golf's booted sister car, the Jetta, what's happening to that range? Well, it has changes to the lineup similar to the Golf. It starts with the 1800 GL, then we've got a new edition called the TX, which will take over from the 1600 CL, but we'll see that later. And um, range finishes with the 1300 CCC. Now, over there, we've got a, a very upmarket and expensive-looking Sirocco. Is that the top-of-the-line model? Well, it's actually the GT, the cheapest model in the lineup. For 86, it gets some special GTX features, like the all-round black body extensions and twin front lamps and larger wheels and tyres. That's interesting about the body kit, because uh, sometimes it, it doesn't work on cars, and I think it really works very well on that one. Well, I think it, it, it makes it look more attractive, and people do buy Sirocco for style after all. Of course, people pay a lot of money for Sirocco's. Well, this, for all these new features, the, the trim package on the GT doesn't actually increase in price. These features aren't going to be included on the GTL model for the new model year, so we've decided to run with just the two model lineup, the GT and the injection GTX. So, some very obvious improvements for the Sirocco. Yes, some, some superb improvements. The, the GT, for example, will look extremely sporty on the road with the additional extras. They're very aggressively priced. Our dealers should be delighted. Ellen, once again, thanks very much indeed. Chris. A customer's decision to buy a new car is based on lots of rational things like price, safety, running costs and build quality. But perhaps the most important factors of all are less definable, the image, the style, the design of the car, whether it fits in with your style of life, whether it fits your personality. Now I'm on the roof of the design studio here at Wolfsburg and with me is Dominic Burnell who's Polo product manager. Dominic, this is the, the latest product from the, uh, the team of stylists here. What, what is this? Tell me about it. Well, Chris, this is the Polo Coupe Fox, and we're introducing it essentially for two reasons. Firstly, we want to establish a exciting and individual identity for the coupe, and we see this fashionable little car as helping us to enhance just such an image. And secondly, we feel that uh, this car will help us to differentiate the coupe range away further from competition. As you can see, its rather chic styling is complemented by such features as the special striping, the colour-matched wheel trims, and its modern check-up holstery. We think that it will attract the growing band of younger buyers and women motorists who are looking for something different, fresh and fun to drive. And indeed, the Fox will not only replace the st standard one-litre coupe, but it will be cheaper, so it will clearly make it more desirable to this target group of customers. Dominic, any other changes to the Polo lineup? Yes, there are. We're going to be streamlining the saloon range. With fewer customers out in the marketplace now buying small saloons, we're going to reduce our offer from three down to two versions by deleting the GL. Now, our new top of range model will be the 1.3 litre Formula E version, which will offer the same performance, but with the added benefit of improved economy. Now, being our new top of range model, we will be upgrading the Formula E with improved trim and appointment and specification, thus making it an even better buy. And in fact, the uh, revised lineup on the saloon range will have equipment differences with their hatch counterparts. And I'm happy to say that we shall reflect this in lower relative prices for the saloon derivatives, better value for money on the saloons. And are there any mechanical changes? I know in the past you've had lots of criticism of those polo brakes from owners. Yes, there has been some criticism, uh, and it was really levelled at heavy braking. 
And I'm very pleased to say that since March of this year, Chris, all polars have had modifications to the front discs, and this has significantly reduced pedal effort. And indeed, we are also now beginning to get all polars with improved driver pedals as well, again, helping to improve driver comfort. The other significant mechanical changes are changes to the engines and the introduction of five-speed gearboxes. And indeed, our one-litre engine will be upgraded, for example, from 40 to 45 brake horsepower, giving improved acceleration and top speed. And with the 4 plus E gearboxes, these will be now standard fitment to our former lead derivatives to replace the 3 plus E. And what other detail changes? Essentially, they fall into three areas, radio fitment, an extension to the factory options, and some changes to trim and colours. Um, radios, we will be fitting um, a Blaupun push-button radio to our mid and top of range models. Uh, as far as the optional equipment, the 4 plus E gearbox will become available at extra charge on the Coupe S and the uh, 1.3 GL. For the first time we will be also be seeing the factory offering a glass sunroof on all polos. And for the Coupe S and the saloon derivatives, a new style 5.5 GL wheel, which will be rather attractive, as will an extension to the styled roof rails, which will now be available in black. And finally, uh, there will be some revamping to some of the upholsteries and we'll be introducing two new colours. So all in all, a better range, better value. So Ellen, some quite significant changes to the polo range. Yes, that end of the market is where value for money is extremely important. Uh, we have a very, very good range of vehicles. Dominic has shown you some of the changes for 1986, which does give us a range of very competitive vehicles at that end of the market. Do you feel today's car buyer is harder to please? Yes, they are very discerning. In fact, I believe today that you can no longer dictate to the market, but must react to it. And we have listened very carefully to what our dealers have said and what our customers have said. And we believe that we have, for 1986, a very competitive range of vehicles. OK, well, let's go back to the design studio and look at two more ways in which Volkswagen marketing are reacting to those market forces. Lucy, we saw Dominic's special edition there. These are your two special editions. Uh, it, it seems to me the motor industry is uh, throwing up a lot more of these sort of cars, limited special edition models. Uh, why, why is this? Well, I think they give us all the opportunity of, of gaining extra volume sales and they attract new customers into the showroom because they always offer good value for money packages. Now these are your, your two examples. This is a bit more than just a, a limited edition special, isn't it? That's right, it's the TX. It replaces the, the current 1600 CL in the Jetta lineup for the 86 model year. And what's special about it? Well, it has a slightly sporty equipment package. You can see that it's got the black body trimmings, special upholstery, a sports steering wheel, tinted glass. It reminds me of the old uh, driver that you used to do on the Golf. Is it a bit like that? That's right. It is a very similar package. And on the, the cabriolet here, what's, uh, what's different here? Well, the convertible is a fun car and it does pe appeal to people who are conscious about their image. And you can see it has all white bodywork, white wheels, and a special navy roof and seats with an embossed pattern CC, and hence the name Convertible CC. I should think it, uh, it'll do very well as a limited edition. Lucy, thanks very much indeed. Thank you, Chris. Well, now that we've heard about the new equipment packages for 1986, higher manufacturing quality, increasing customer awareness, and the latest campaign models, let's now preview the car we've all been waiting for. We're on the country roads on the outskirts of Wolfsburg on our last day here with the GTI 16 valve. Driving down German roads in the GTI reminds me of those uh, halcyon days back in 1976 when they first launched the GTI and we all arrived from England and we drove down roads like this. We went out to the Hockenheim race circuit and we suddenly found out what GTI motoring was all about and what a lot of fun it was. Since then of course uh, the GTI has captured the hearts of a lot of people in Britain. In fact it now accounts for uh, getting on for a quarter of all golf sales in our country. The 16 valve is a very different kettle of fish. It's not just a GTI with a quicker engine. I think it's quite important to get over the fact that this is a, a very different motor car. This 16 valve, 139 brake horsepower engine is not a, a rorty top of the, the range power pack. It's a smooth, 
very well developed and very carefully engineered unit. You can put this thing in fifth gear at a thousand revs and you can put your foot flat on the floor and it will just pull smoothly and gently away right up through the rev range. Of course if you want to snap down a couple of gears and zap the throttle open it goes far more quickly than the GTI ever did. As I found out earlier today around the country roads near the, the forests and it certainly needs its uh, ventilated front brakes and its uh, strapped down suspension and revised damper settings. But even so, it's not a rock hard racer. It's a very smooth, very fast GT motor car. I think that it's, uh, it's going to do an awful lot for the GTI image and it's going to give a lot of other manufacturers a great deal to think about. The 16 valve GTI now, I've been joined by John Mazaros, marketing manager of Audi Volkswagen. John, this new GTI seems to just about open up a whole new chapter in the development of the car. I think Volkswagen it is a more like a new page because our car is evolving all the time. Our worldwide sales success confirms that our product development policies are on the right track. The 16-valve Golf GTI will come us around January next year. A month or so later we will get the four-wheel drive Golf Synchro and so it will, will go on and on because it is the only way that we can keep the brand in ascendancy. But with both these new cars it is not only the engine or the four-wheel drive system that matters, it is the totality of the cars that is important. The efficiency, the remarkable balance between the power drivetrain and the chassis that make them exciting and enjoyable to drive. But nobody should be surprised. Volkswagens are reaching new records all the time. In the past few weeks the new Golf has become the fastest selling car ever in the history of motor car. Since its introduction some 18 months ago, over 1 million have been sold and to quote freely an old Volkswagen advertisement, Eight, one million owners over 18 months cannot be wrong. In fact, in Germany, in the first four, four months of this year, more goals were sold than the combined total of Ford Escorts and most Vauxhall Astras. In America, a motor magazine voted the Golf GTR as the car of the year. So wherever you look in the world, Volkswagen is clearly very successful. So some of the critics of the new Golf have been proven wrong. Why do you think that is? Well, as you well know, even good critics can be wrong sometimes, especially when they choose to make judgment by looking at purely the superficialities. The Golf was the original hatchback. The Golf GTI was the original hot hatchback. So I think many people felt that they would rather have the original than the replica. Our designers know what they're doing. They concentrate on giving real benefits to the customer, not just superficial, transient decorations. All our surveys confirm that our owners know what they are getting from Volkswagen is real quality. Yes, I've noticed that all your people mention the word quality. Do you think that's the main reason for your success? Well, it has to be. Quality of successful the quality of a successful product can only come from quality of design, quality of engineering ability, quality of materials and quality of production. Real quality is really very hard to find, especially among smaller cars. When we talk about quality, we not only refer to the rational benefits of reliability, economy and performance, but also to good styling, good ride and interior comfort. So our overall quality is comparable to, and perhaps even better than many expensive luxury cars. And that is not only our own opinion. More than once recently, motoring journalists wrote this about the Volkswagen Golf. If Mercedes were to ever make a smaller car, the Golf would be the one they would make. And our customers know this. And that is why they can derive real pride from owning and driving a quality car. Pride is another word I've been hearing. Is that really important for customers? Oh yes, I think it is. I frequently pretend that my car is just the means of transport and nothing else. But I am really kidding myself. A 
A car is a major possession and it is very visible for all to see. It expresses people's taste, standing, standing and individuality. And these things are far, far beyond the rational. No matter what it is, when you know that you have something that is real quality, justly better than what others have around you, then you feel pride. Just as any transport manager will tell you, to give somebody a car that is less than their, less than their allocation, a revolution would start. Now, years ago, I drove home in a basic Beetle. The following day, my neighbor asked my wife if I had been demoted. And it's still the same today. Pride, you know, is also to do with confidence, our customers' confidence and our own confidence in Volkswagen. It is this confidence in the quality that gives us the opportunity to introduce this year 20,000 miles main service intervals with only an annual check in between. From 1986 model year onwards, every car was will be sold with free recovery service applying to the United Kingdom and also to Western Europe. If we did not have confidence in our quality, we could never make such an offer. We are also introducing a very inexpensive extended warranty, which is the nearest thing anybody can have to a full manufacturer's guarantee. This offer is not only expresses our confidence in a product, but also in the very good quality of our dealer organization. Th this last point then completes the circle. The quality of our cars is complemented by the quality of the people involved in their selling and servicing. And I think that we are right in deciding that the issues of quality and pride of ownership will be the theme of all our marketing effort in the future. Now, in order to show that Volkswagen is a truly international organization, let's look at some Volkswagen commercials from all over the world. If you've been waiting to experience the thrill of driving the hottest new Volkswagens, they've arrived. For topless entertainment, it's the exciting Cabriolet. If you like to cut corners, carve them up with a Scirocco. But if you really want to fly, fly GGI. Motor Trends Car of the Year at your Volkswagen dealer, where German engineering means a great deal. du troupeau pour rouler en polo. Hmm? The new jumbo-sized Volkswagen Golf. It has a 29% larger trunk for loads with 13% more passenger space. The new Golf is much faster with a Porsche-like rear axle to improve load holding. It also has a three-year anti-corrosion guarantee and a stainless steel exhaust. But the strongest reason for driving it is it's the toughest, most reliable Volkswagen we've ever built. New Golf from Volkswagen. Well, I hope in this program you've gained an insight into the thinking behind Volkswagen marketing for the coming year, the rationale underlying the revised model range, and most of all, an idea of how important the concept of quality is in the marketing of Volkswagen cars. John, Ellen, thank you very much indeed. Goodbye. <laughs>